Hello, you're welcome to today's class. Today we'll be looking at IS28 investments in associate and joint venture. So, today we'll be talking about um, how to account for investment in associate. A company is referred to as an associate if another company has more than 20% interest, controlling interest in that company. So, on this note, it is treated in accordance with IAS 28. And according to IAS 28, you don't consolidate an associate or a joint venture. Although, in skill, you are not meant to study on no joint venture. So, I will restrict my teaching to only investments in associate, although they are the same. Now, an associate I have explained. Now, you don't consolidate an associate. Rather, you treat it in accordance with equity method. Equity method of accounting is that method of accounting in which the investment in associates is accounted initially at cost and subsequently the share of the invest investor's interest in the post acquisition net assets of the investee. For example, if the associates uh, was acquired at 20 naira initially, 20 naira is the cost of associates. Using equity method, we will recognize 20 naira initially at cost. Then subsequently, we will find the po uh, uh, post acquisition retained earnings. And you know how post acquisition retained earnings is calculated? Is calculated simply by saying, Retain earning as a date of reporting minus retain earning as a date of acquisition. You are used to this. So that will give us post acquisition retain earning. So the holding company now will take its own share in that post acquisition retain earning. And that is equity method. I explained it here. So under equity method of accounting, the investment made in the associate is recorded initially at cost. In each subsequent year, the investor share of the associate's profit is added to the carrying amount of the investment and is also recognized as income in the investor's financial statement. I will explain this better when we take a question. Now, we we'll move on. This is a formula we can use to calculate the ca carrying amount of the investment. Invest cost of investment, cost of investment, cost of investment look at it cost of investment you add post acquis post um, you add parent company share of post acquisition profit after you add this post acquisition profit is calculated you see retain earning as a date of reporting minus retain earning as a date of acquisition that will give you post acquisition profit or loss from associates so the holding company will take its own percentage its own percentage could be 25 it could be 20 it could be 30 it could be 40 it could be 45 as the case may be then you less in payment of the investment in associate if it has been reviewed for impairment in accordance with IES 36 my professional colleagues will teach you that the you less dividend received from associates if it has been accounted for now how do we now recognize, calculate post acquisition retained earning? I showed it here. Retain earning as at date of reporting. Retain earning as a date of reporting. You see, I'm using imaginary figure, so it's not a question. To, let's assume it is 2,500. We have retained earning as a date of acquisition. We assume it is 1,100. Now, you minus this, it gave us 1 4. It's still based on the assumption that we got this 1 4. Then the percentage investment in our associate is 20% multiplied by 1 4. So the holding company will recognize 280 in its two places one in the investment in our associate and also in consolidated retained earnings. Note, they are both figures are imaginary one. I also indicated, should you be reading your notes, which is already in your group. So, significance, influence. Significant influence is when a, a person 
uh, uh, actually has the power to participate in the financial to participate in the financial and operating policy of the investee as the case may be so transaction between the parent company we have sales of inventory between the parent company and sales from parent company to now that is how we account for unrealized profits you've already learned how unrealized profit is calculated since you've already learned how unrealized profit is calculated it is easier to treat it here now it depends on whom is a seller it depends on whom is the seller if the seller now i provided this in the notes but i, I will explain orally the treatment of unrealized profit which i know you already know how to calculate and you also calculate it in this question we'll take here is very very simple how do you treat unrealized profit it depends on whom is a seller if the parent company is the seller the unrealized profit if the parent company is the seller note it if the parent company is the seller the unrealized profit will be deducted from investment in associate and also from consolidated retained earning if the seller is the associate company the unrealized profit will be deducted from consolidated uh, inventory and from consolidated retained earning so note it i'll take it again if the seller is the associate company the unrealized profit will be deducted from consolidated retained earning and from consolidated inventory that is that for that now we move forward to take a question the question is very simple we have a explain what is meant by the term associate and significant influence to max i've already explained this explain the equity method of accounting i've already explained this you must know this if you are writing fr you must know these two things distinguish between joint operation and joint venture it's easy joint operators joint ventures are actually different you understand joint operate uh, ventures are, are accounted for in accordance with is 28 why joint operations are accounted for in accordance with ifrs3 business combination you understand joint ventures is represented by different separate uh, moving uh, separate vehicles and all that but the first one is very important just master is actually two marks so you already got your two marks so in october we now take the question in october in october 31st 2013 y limited paid seventy thousand to acquire 40 percent of the share capital of z limited which became its associate draft financial statement of the two companies for the year to October 31st, 2017. Statement of comprehensive income for the year ended October 31st, 2017. YZ Limited Limited. Now operating profit. We have operating profit uh, was given. Dividend received from Z was given. Profit before tax was given. Income tax expenses was given. Profit for the year. Statement of financial position. Assets, non-current assets, property, plants and equipment. Investment in Z Limited at cost, current assets, equity, ordinary share capital, retained earning liabilities, current liabilities. Statement of changes in equity, balance brought forward, profit for the year, dividend paid, balance carry forward. Uh, information one in the draft financial statement of Y Limited, the company's investment in Z Limited has been recognized at cost. And dividend received from Z Limited has been recognized as income. The financial statement showed the situation as it would be without application of equity method. Either in the year of October 31st, 2017, or in previous year. The retained earnings of Z Limited on October 31st, 2013 were 50,000, and all of its assets and liabilities were carried at fair value. None of the companies had issued any shares since that date. During the year to October 31st, 2017, Y Limited bought goods from Z Limited for 15,000 
which had cost Z Limited 10,000. One quarter of these goods were unsold by Y Limited. Now you can see the seller here is Z, the buyer is Y. So the seller is Z. Now you are required to prepare. So we'll now start with explanatory notes. In the explanatory note, I showed you how unrealized profit is calculated. Since the sales price is 15 and the cost price is 10, they are making a profit of how much? 5,000. Now, one quarter is unsold. So, one quarter times 5,000. Now, 5,000 will give you 15 minus 10. Will now give us an amount. Then, we we'll multiply it by the percentage that y has in x which is 40 percent that will now give us 5,000 naira. so deduct the unrealized profit from consolidated retained earnings and consolidated inventory two post acquisition retained earnings will now be 330 minus 50 which is equal to 280 so the yplc will take 40 percent of the post investment in associate we computed investment in associate by bringing cost of investment of 70 then we not brought pc share of post acquisition profit which is 280 and they gave us this pc share of profit for the year which is 55 times 40. so this is profit brought forward and this is profit for the year now, in this profit pro forward, we have to minus the retain any as at acquisition. I've already shown you how it was gotten. Look at it, 280. So, 330 minus this. So, we'll continue. Consolidated retain any. PC retain any is 605. Less dividend from associate. So, you know, this retain any is containing the dividend. You remove the dividend. You don't recognize it. You now recognize post acquisition retained any 112 that is here. You also recognize profit for the year 22 that is also here, completing the dual effect. You are now less the unrealized profit of 0 0.5. So you divide 500 by 1000, you have 0 0.5 because we hung three zeros. So you now have this value. So the corresponding entry of unrealized profits will be deducted from own, uh, from consolidated inventory. So it's simple. So we'll now move to solution. In the solution, we have operating profits. You don't consolidate, so you take only that of the holding company. You now recognize profit from associates in that year, which is 22, we calculated. Look at it, 22. So you bring it in. So you now have profit before tax to be this. Less income tax only of the holding company. You now have this. But that is not my interest. My interest is in the financial position. Now, PPE, you pick only that of the holding company. You don't touch the one of the associate. Investment in associate, we don't, we've already done workings for it, workings. So you bring it in 204. You understand? Good. Look at it. 204. Look at it. 204 good now having brought that in you now bring in your you take total that become total non-current assets you bring in your current asset your current assets now remember your current asset is including your current asset is actually including your your dividend receive as cash so you take it away you don't recognize it since you've deducted it from profit, you also deduct it from here, completing the dual effect. You also minus the unrealized profit that gave us this, so we now have total. I hope you understand. You can always come back and watch this video again and read our notes. You don't need to read textbook. You don't need to buy textbook. We'll provide you with everything you need. Good. So we have equity. Equity, you bring it in. We have retained earnings. Retained earnings is 728.5. So you add. You now have this. You only take the equity of the holding company. Now, the retain any, we don't already calculate them. So, you bring the retain any in. So, you now have current liabilities to bring it in. So, it balance. Look at it. 1383. 1383. So, it's incumbent on you to look at it again and go through it more. Look at our notes. Come back and release it again. This is learning at your confidence. At your convenience. You don't need to go for tutorials, physical tutorials again. We are here to make things simpler for you. If there is anything you don't understand, you can drop your question there or you drop it on WhatsApp.
If you are solving any additional question you have issue, drop it there. We will attend to you. Thank you.